This is the annoying part because you have to undo those, lock, 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 and are you sick of how long it actually takes you to put your tripod away? We're gonna be talking about tripods today, the differences and uh, one tripod that you could potentially consider. And yeah, we're gonna talk about the differences between the tripod heads as well and why you might actually consider something like the one that we're gonna be looking at. And this is the small rig tripod right here, but we have to talk about that ball mount. It's brand new, it's the AD08, and it also has this awesome quick release function, which is incredible to mount it and obviously dismount it. What's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. We're gonna be talking about this tripod right here by Small Rig, and also this tripod ball head as well. And there are a few things that you need to consider when you're actually doing a lot of tripod shots is the fluid head is one of the biggest and most important things, but also the new ease of use of how to actually put this up a little bit higher and lock it into its new place. That's one of the things that you wanna be able to do, especially when you are doing shoots that require you to be a little bit faster about things. This is the Small Rig Free Blazer Counterbalance Carbon Fiber Video Tripod Kit, the AD Pro 8. It offers a one-touch quick leg adjustment made out of carbon fiber. It has an interchangeable ground and mid-level spreader, has flat or spiked feet. It has a solid PH8 counterbalance tripod fluid head, which has a nice quick release system. The fluid head can support up to eight kilos. And all this you get for a total of 799 USD. All right, so as you can see here, this is the small rig bag, which is pretty nice. It is a soft case bag, so it's not very protective as such, but pulls out pretty easily. And it does actually have a little compartment on the inside as well. Um, I don't know if you want to put a couple of things. It's in a little zip up compartment, which is kind of cool, but you know, at least it does come with something like this. Okay, now when it actually comes to raising this up, it is so simple. What I personally like to do is bring it on the inside, then lift all legs up, lift it up and lock it while it's in. Now, what I personally like to do as well is ground the front leg and split it apart. So what a lot of people will actually do is unlock them and raise it this way, which is absolutely fine. But if for some instance, this leg drops down, you're already gonna be on an uneven sort of uh, length between the legs. Whereas if all the legs are together, you're gonna be able to raise them at all the perfectly the same height and then your balance is going to be much better, specifically if you are on a flat surface, but at least gives you a better starting point. And then you can just drop the legs to try and get it a little bit balanced. Then lastly, you know, balance it with the ball head. Now, when it comes to the legs, these ones are okay, but you do have to undo them each individually, then lock them up. And there isn't really no fast way of actually doing this like it will still take you a bit of time to actually get up to a standard operating height and if you are in a job where you're trying to really be fast about it if you're you know doing wedding filmmaking or if you're actually just on a job site where you're doing talking head pieces with uh, commercials or very small I suppose uh, talking head pieces and you need to move locations having a tripod like this isn't really going to be easy now this one is very similar to the last one. It is a lot smaller, a lot lighter. It's more of a travel tripod. It has a very basic uh, tilt head. It does pan a little bit. There's a little bit of resistance, but same again, you can't uh, really adjust that resistance. When it comes to the legs, these ones are a little bit more simple because you just unflick them and then lock them all out, which is perfectly fine. Like this is great for traveling. Uh, but it is obviously much smaller and does, you know, handle smaller cameras. And I won't be able to fix the FX6 directly on here. This is suited towards more smaller mirrorless cameras. And if you are trying to utilize that pan movement and tilt motion, it's not going to be anywhere close to smooth as this small rig one. But when it comes to adjusting the height, same again, you have to unclip every single part of the legs rather than with the small rig one, 
is you, you've got one little clasp that you undo and then you can pretty much change the height right there. So when you are on a gravel surface or grass surface like this, this is where you're actually gonna be utilizing the spikes at the bottom. So you can actually take these off. This is what you would use inside someone's house on a really expensive you know, flooring. You don't wanna scratch it up. This is what you're actually gonna be using or carpet or whatever. Um, but this one, you have the spikes on the bottom. So when it does dig into the grass or into the gravel, it's gonna you know, help the tripod stay nice and sturdy as opposed to moving around. So it is really nice that it does have that option sort of inbuilt and just that quick release system where you can pretty much clip it in and take it out. It just makes it so much easier and faster when actually setting up on the job. Now, when it comes to the minimum operating height on this small rig tripod, it actually goes down to a total of 58 centimeters from the ground, which is actually quite low for a very good quality tripod. And the other two tripods, funnily enough, are pretty much exactly the same around, around about that 55 to 60 centimeters from the ground. And if you do actually want to get this low, this is where you would actually put that ground spreader to get it nice and low. Or you can still actually have that medium spreader, which doesn't spread it as much, but it still keeps it nice and stable at the top. And the other two tripods don't have a spreader in between. It just has a locking mechanism at the top where it locks into certain distances. Whereas this small rig one, you can actually have minor adjustments on how wide you actually want to be spreading it. So what are the things you need to look out for when you're actually buying a tripod? Now, a tripod head like this, I mean, it does the job, but if you're actually relying on trying to, uh, you know, manipulate the tripod in the direction you actually want to go in, this is the head that you probably want to stay away from. Now, it's perfectly fine. It does the job enough, but if you really want nice, smooth movement, this definitely isn't going to get you smooth movement at all. And if you are a videographer and you've got a ball head tripod like this, this is the one that you probably should completely stay away from because ball head tripods are mainly for photographers. They're pretty much designed for photographers to be in any kind of position, uneven ground, then go into vertical mode as well. So these are the things that you really need to stay away from if you are a videographer. But if you're a photographer, having a video tripod probably isn't for you anyway. This is probably where you'd get such a smaller and lighter tripod for photography. So when it comes to balancing these, you want to be able to have, let's say this FX6 to not fall backwards or fall forward. So uh, essentially what we're gonna be doing straight away is pushing the rails a little bit further forward or just sliding it through and we'll make sure it doesn't fall forward. Kind of like balancing a gimbal in a way. So here we go, lock it up and she seems perfectly fine. And when it comes to the counterbalance, it's, you can see here, it will actually fall forward or it will fall, will it fall backwards? Yeah, it falls backwards. Um, so essentially we need to counterbalance that. So when you actually let go, it should stay in that exact same spot. So we'll come over to the counterbalance side and we'll click, let's say level two. No, we'll try level three. Level three is perfectly balanced. So when you pretty much uh, are using this, you can see here if you're gonna be into this spot and you're gonna hold on the spot, you wanna be able to hold on to that spot and not this fall forward or try and pull you, yourself back. So that's the whole point of having a counterbalance system. Now it also has a tilt drag. So it let, essentially a tilt drag is just the resistance of that tilting action. So if you put it on zero, it's quite easy to whip around with that tilt, but I like it fairly firm. Actually even three for me is quite nice and that is smooth when it comes to that. Now you also have a pan drag. So same thing, it's how fast or how easy you can actually pan, so you can see that is pretty much number one, which is off. Number two has the resistance. Number three, a little bit more resistance. And number four is the most amount of resistance. And this is going to give you the best amount of smooth movement through this action.
Now there are actually a couple of other benefits that you can actually have with ball head tripods. You can actually have them on jibs and uh, you can also have them on smaller tripods that are mounted on something, specifically you know, car rigs and stuff. So these things can actually be so much easier because you can completely take off this ball head, put it directly onto whatever you're you know, putting it on a jib and then tighten it back up. Whereas a regular tripod, you can't really do that. Majority of the smaller tripods have just like a shaft piece that goes straight into the tripod and you can't really mount it on anything else. So when you're on an uneven surface like this, uh, you can see here by the bubble that it isn't actually balanced. Now, what you generally do with a conventional tripod is you would lift this leg up and trying to, you know, manipulate it so it gets balanced this way, absolutely perfectly fine. But uh, what you can do is literally just move this and balance it like so and we're perfectly balanced already it's that simple but generally what i personally do is i actually utilize the legs first to try and get it all balanced and then it use the uh the top part the ball head last and just to try and get a little bit extra uh, i suppose of the last bits So the greatest thing about this part here essentially is that quick release. Now with this particular plate, this is actually from the RS4, uh, which DJI only just released, so you can go check out that video, but it's pretty much a Manfrotto plate. So any sort of Manfrotto plate should fit directly onto this mount. Um, and you can slide and pull it off. It's pretty easy how you can clip it straight in and then take it straight off. Now, there are some specific tripods like this one that the base plate is Manfrotto, but you can't actually put any kind of other plate in there because there's this little metal piece that actually locks in the standard tripod, so that won't fit anywhere at all. And unfortunately, with this one, you're only allowed to use the standard base plate that it actually comes with. Then a lot of these smaller photography-based tripods, they're generally Arca Swiss and they're not really Manfrotto-based. Uh, but Arca Swiss is pretty decent. It's fairly uh, common, but obviously if you do have like the DJI mount, you can't really put that on there and uh, you know have some sort of quick release system. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And obviously I'll put a link in the description below if you do want to check this uh, tripod by Small Rig out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.